Welcome, Jackie. Welcome back to The Real Talk, my number two guest. <laughs> yes. Wow, time has flown. It's been about a year uh, since we've done the lo- first one where we connected. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think we first connected in, um, we connected in Austin. I met you, did I meet you in, in it was yes. Austin, right? In Austin. Yes. Uh, in end of February of the ERA conference. Yes. yes. And yes. then when you, when you were in, a, you had a breakout session. Yes. And I'm like, oh wow, she's a leader. She's she, you. You were host, you were uh, you were moderate. Actually, you were the speaker. You were the moderating it. You're moderating. moderating it. Yeah, you're yeah. moderating it. And I'm like, wow. And that's really I'm like this is this is I learned about you. I started really. Oh, she's the she's the founder of Women Electronics. She's the lead of the electronics industry. So it's so fascinating. Thank you for coming back. And I know it's been a year of a lot of things have changed. A lot of mm-hmm. things have changed. So how is Women Electronics in the last year? kind of post-pandemic, as you would say, we're coming out of that now. And how's everything going? How's anything's changed? What's the updates that you got going for us? Well, I feel like a lot. Um, We fast-forwarded our program in 2020 because um, when COVID hit, we were already set to go online, virtual, but we just went fast-forward. So we took our chapters online, which proved to be a really good model. So we're going to keep that. Um, we have an online mentorship program. We're going to keep that going. Um, so I, I think things are full speed ahead. Yeah, I mean, that's something I'm going to get Should into. I lower this? Yeah, like this? you're good. Okay. Wherever, okay. Whatever you feel like. It's, right. a, it's okay. okay. Uh, I wanted to get into is um, really the pandemic. It's how, is, as we said, remember that pivot word, all the stuff we used back then. We pivot, we moved. We had to mitigate mm-hmm. the disruption. Um, how do you think... Are you better coming out of post-pandemic? Do you think that has accelerated your growth within women electronics? Yes. Uh, I think what it allowed us to do was just connect with people where normally people are so busy. They're traveling. They have so many things going on. So we actually were able to connect more than we thought we would. Mm-hmm. So um, and, and our members were able to have a sense of community because people were getting very isolated so I think people were hopping on that maybe sometimes wouldn't have hopped on. We even had many leaders hopping on. So I just think it was just a time of connection. Yeah. I, I As much as we've gone digital, I think it's got us more connected. And that's one thing I feel in the last year myself and connecting to someone like yourself and many other leaders in this industry. It was a room because we used to go to shows and you know rub elbows or network. Mm-hmm. And, but somehow the digital let us build scale much faster. It let us touch people faster and let us you know be able to build awareness more you know into the industries or whatever industry or in action generally but especially in the electronics industry of what we we are specialized in it's allowed us uh to grow and i remember we've we also try to help you do a digital conference that you had back yes. in was it november oh my goodness yeah. our first digital conference and we had the one little mishap on our end <laughs> with the zoom link but you know i just think it's it's one of those things that i would have to say on that as far as we create all the technology in mm-hmm. our industry, but we don't always utilize it. Yeah. So I think coming out of the pandemic, those conversations are actually going to be happening for, for probably the next couple of years to come because we find that a lot of um, leaders are already trying to kind of go right back mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, nine to five, be in the office, have people in under one roof. I don't know if that's as effective as maybe some people think. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I wonder, are people um, doing KPIs? Are they really researching to see, did productivity go up during COVID? If so, how do you measure that? Mm -hmm. And and is it going to be as effective with everybody back in the office? So it's such a knee-jerk reaction to just want to go back. Kind of the rubber band effect. Like we, we yes. pulled out, we expanded out. Okay, we expanded, evolved, and we're pulling out. And all of a sudden when kind of the world opens up and goes back to normal, it just comes back. And it's, but at the end of the day, that rubber band effect can really work because it we've evolved. I think the last year, the year and a half has completely accelerated technology, the way we live, the way we connect, the way we scale, the way all companies can reach out, touch people, their clients or their s- customers or whoever they're trying to, um, whoever their prospect is, it's completely changed. And you hit a point there of the technology with measuring KPIs. It's like, 
we are all digital working from home, but now we have systems and it's really accelerated the use of, I would say, contact resource management systems, CRM systems and data systems to collect data. And I yeah. think one thing is a year, a lot of companies that are very data forward, as you say, the big tech companies, but the smaller companies, we weren't so data forward. It was more of thought or mm -hmm. I feel or gut or I have this market, but now it's like, oh, we could collect this data. This data is very powerful. So what have you been hearing about that type of things with infrastructure of technology and software that's being integrated? Well, it's an exciting time. Um, we historically in our industry have separated hardware and software, mm -hmm. right? So we create the technology and electronic component industry, but we don't really collaborate with the software side. Mm -hmm. Now you're seeing a real need for the two to come together. And you'll see in our sponsorship family, um, of companies, we have uh, Orbweaver now, yeah. which is um, on that software side. And we're really excited about it because there really is a need to be looking at the software side and to, to really collaborate together and companies to start thinking of all that data. You know, how can you utilize the data? How do you measure it? So a lot of companies are just getting started on that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a little overwhelming sometimes, but at least we're on that path. At least we're starting to to go in that direction. I'll just have to mm -hmm. say too, though, as far as we were talking about working remote and going back, you know, where this affects women, maybe in particular, and, and um, is that a lot of women found that because they're the primary caregivers at home mm -hmm. too, as well mm -hmm. as working, they actually enjoyed working remote. Mm -hmm. It was hard mm -hmm. with the homeschooling and things like that. But if, if a lot of companies can work out a hybrid model, mm -hmm. maybe they're in a couple days a week, maybe they're home a couple days a week, a few days a week. And, you know, it, it just can really have more of an ease of life for a lot of people, the commute time from what mm -hmm. I'm hearing. So there's, you know, just to regroup on that real quick, um, to say that I, I just really hope in order to have a diverse workplace, that the leaders will be more um, listening to what the needs of the talent is. I, I cannot agree more uh, because of the data that we can collect now and check out productivity, which working from home, we can see that working from home does. And I think it's also spread to certain positions, mm -hmm. certain roles. Yes. Not all roles are very efficient, especially the new people, new recruit, new talent bringing on. You need, to, especially for very sales, energy focus. It's kind of, but unless you're a management type or an IT or a finance, there are some areas that could be more flexibility or have a more hybrid. You know, you come in for big meetings and this, but of course, as you said, with the women's side of being the leader of the household and also bringing in working full time, get that flexibility to be able to, um, I mean, in my opinion, you, you have more you work more hours, you would put more output, right? Yes. That or, uh, or input into the company, your output is, is greater because at that point, it's like, oh, I have flexibility, I work from home, say, in the mornings, take my kids to school, come back, I have to take care of some things or take them to a doctor's appointment, but I can come back, mm -hmm. I can still work at night or I can catch up on my work at night. But when we're so used to that, I would think eight to five mentality or eight to six, whatever that, that, that mentality that's always status quo, eight to five, which uh, in this day and age, it's not really eight to five anymore. We are yeah. connected more than ever. Things are moving so fast that it is kind of a 24, seven, of, you're always connecting somehow, especially if you're sales focused because your customer mm -hmm. experience comes first these days, that, that touch point. So what ha have you seen from all the, the women in your, uh, the, um, your members and women members and people coming or the new generation coming on board with Women Electronics, how are they feeling? Do they, as you said, some of them feel like they like the hybrid model or do you think it's, um, or some of them, do some actually feel better in the office? Do some women actually... Well, I, I think it just depends okay. what you're saying is is on the position. So okay. it all has to make sense, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody, everything has to make business sense. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're a working professional in today's environment, you really have the flexibility to go where it makes sense for you. Mm -hmm. I would say don't beat your head against the wall at a company who doesn't match the values or match what you're trying to accomplish in your life because mm -hmm. it's not just professional, it's personal too. So there's plenty of opportunities and options at this stage to align with a company that can offer what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So some people actually do prefer to be in the office a couple of days. I know from my prior experience, many people have said the same thing. I tended to get less done in the office um, because there's a lot of chatter and there's just a lot of distractions. But when you're managing a team, you really do need to pull them together sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I, for me personally, I think the hybrid model in those positions that makes sense mm -hmm. is very effective. 
Yeah, I, I kind of agree. And at the end of the day, people say, oh, I just want to work from home. And even I have uh, people who we're, we're interviewing come in and say, oh, kids, can we just work remotely? But I'm like, well, in the beginning, two things. Are you experienced or are you entry level? Um, and also, usually the experience bill come in, and it also takes time. There's a time to learn the process. It's come into play. And also, I, um, I also some of my salespeople, I'm like, it's earned. If you reach your goals, you're very proficient. We can measure those KPIs, and you meet your goals. Let's do it. Let's let's try it. But uh, because now, more as more um, employees and more te teams are coming back to the office more, more offices are opening up. Um, it is a very, it's a kind of a slippery slope a little bit when you when you want to hire talent, and that's the question. The first actual question they ask is it. Yeah. You know, so these are the little challenges that I've been run into personally myself. Um, and of course, probably you've been dealing with or you've been hearing about, too, is the first question. Some of these new recruits or new talent come for the employment side. Well, and I also think that a lot of the youth actually want to go in the office. Mm -hmm. And really, you can't substitute that mentorship, mm -hmm. you know, the water cooler talk and things yeah. like that. They really need that initially. And really, it's. When, when fresh talent comes into our industry, they really need a good solid two years to, mm -hmm. to really get their bearings mm -hmm. in the industry, understand how the channel works. And there's so much to our industry. So to me, it's a very, um, it's just a good plan to say, hey, you come in, you learn the industry. Like you said, we look at the KPIs. Once you're at a place where your performance level is just as good, if not better, in a remote situation, then we'll consider that. But I think that it's a good incentive. Yeah, I definitely agree. Definitely. So how through this last year, uh, Women Electronics has transformed. You guys are having a lot more digital meetings expanding out. I think you've also expanded to Europe as well. Mm -hmm. um, and how is that the touch point are also, I mean, everybody think women electronics, but is there also men involved? There's also, I know you men on your board, but are, are there men members now? So we do have some male members. Okay. Um, we would encourage men to mm -hmm. join because we want their input at the table. So mm -hmm. Women in Electronics is not just uh, an organization talking about women's issues in a little huddle in a corner. We actually are really encouraging thought leadership. Mm -hmm. We want as many diverse thoughts at the table. So that includes men coming to the table because we're primarily women in our yeah. base. So we really want to include those differences of thought, but also to share that women electronics, and I think I've said this before to you, that we're all about unity. Mm -hmm. So we don't look to overturn or um, replace the men. Mm -hmm. We look to join arms and expand with them. Mm -hmm. So really, that is our approach at women electronics is that we appreciate the males, um, the leaders that are in place now, we, we need them. I mean, mm -hmm. the, there's so much experience a lot of these leaders bring to the table. But when you consider diverse talent, you actually are looking to expand. Mm -hmm. So we're not looking to replace, we're looking to grow and expand. That diversity. But throughout this time, has any of the, like as I say, mission evolved through the pandemic? Has anything changed? How, has your mission at Women Electronics evolved a little bit through the last year and a half? Yeah, so we did get our official 501c3 approval. Mm -hmm. So we are a nonprofit dedicated to the opportunities for women in the electronic industry. Okay. So we have a slight tweak in our mission statement. It used to be developing the talent. Now it's opening the opportunity. So it's just a little tweak, um, but that's our mission statement in the organization. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, that's one thing that we, when we were talking about also is, I think you brought up, we were on a conversation we had, is talking about the DEI. Right. And I know it's a big a subject that you want to discuss, uh, the diversity, equity and inclusion. Right. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about that and how, you know, take us a little more in depth on the micro side about about uh, DEI. OK, so the first thing to say is nobody knows everything mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Even somebody like me who's researching it, mm -hmm. our executive team does. Um, we have a lot of people on this all the time and we're very, we're very dorky. We yeah. love the data. So I spend a lot of time researching and I just like to dig into the data and same with um, our executive team. So, but given that not everybody knows everything. Yep. So um, we strategize quarterly with our Women Electronics Council, which is made up of leaders in the industry, um, male and female. Mm -hmm. And at one of our last uh, meetings, actually, Michael Knight had suggested putting together some best practices for DNI, DEI. And that really struck me. And I thought, you know, 
it's such a good idea. And so what we decided to do is go out to even outside of our industry mm -hmm. and look at some of the experts. So happy to report that we are forming this amazing uh, DEI council now from Women Electronics. We have the person who heads up DEI for AARP, mm -hmm. as well as some other um, industry experts that will be coming on uh, this council. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at best practices for HR, how do you measure, what are some success stories, but also where are some areas that people have maybe gone mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. And the message I would say to our industry is that, yes, we are male dominated. Yes, we have a long way to go, but just hop in wherever you are because we're all just learning this together. And we're, and we're here at Women Electronics to pull as much of the information together as we can mm -hmm. so that the companies can then spare themselves some heartache, some cost, yeah. and, and, and things like that. But DEI, so diversity, equity, inclusion, there's a difference between equality and equity. Mm -hmm. And this is an important uh, topic because I think if people would understand um, maybe the empathy going into these conversations is a little mm -hmm. different. So if you look at equity, equity, I'm sorry, let's backtrack, well, uh, equality. So if you look at equality, that's just an equal opportunity for everyone. So you're going to walk mm -hmm. in the door. Anyone's going to walk in the door. Everything's equal. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you the same thing. Everything's equal. Mm -hmm. Well, with equity, it's having the sensitivity to know when you walked in the door, maybe you hadn't had the opportunity for prior experience. Mm -hmm. Maybe your life circumstances didn't warrant what this person's mm -hmm. were. So what equity does is say, you know, I'm going to give you a little more resources here. Mm -hmm. So it's not oh. a 50-50. It's not an equal. It's you need a little more here, so I'm willing to give that to you here. So that's a difference between diversity, equity, and inclusion. So equity is kind of filling in the gap where the equality didn't happen. Yeah, because a lot of people have different backgrounds. Right. They come from different, hum very humble beginnings or different things, their opportunity that was given to them. So they have different traits and different skill sets or different resources, as you would say, that they never had. So as you say, some people... They have to be given to that at that point. Okay, we, we understand where you came from. You're telling a little story, and we're going to give you a little more resources than another person that's had the has been very fortunate to have all those resources. So right. that does make sense, and it's but I, it's also hard to kind of measure to that fine line of of being um, as I said diplomacy of what is right and what is wrong and what this can bring in educating. Number one thing is education, I think, about it. Yes. Because it this DEI, it is. I mean, I went into it. it there's a lot. There's a lot of information. And it can be confusing because it looks very similar. Mm -hmm. It's very similar. And it's a very, um, and a lot of companies out there still think are not really, cert really understand it. Right. A lot of HR companies, are big to small, yes. understand how this works for the, di especially all come in diversity. All leads with diversity into that. So it's um it's fascinating. I'm glad that you brought you bring this to the table, and I think that it should you, mm -hmm. and bringing the awareness to the industry, leading it because it's the first time I heard it into our electronics industry. Well, and I think though the difference is diversity, equity, and inclusion is a mindset. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, so it's more than an initiative; it's a mindset, mm -hmm. and 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 this is where we get into leadership and all mm -hmm. kinds of things. Because you know somebody had mentioned I was on a podcast recently, and somebody mentioned. Um, yeah, when you hire a woman, you need to, um, the company needs to do their part to market why they hired her and how she has all these qualifications. And I was yeah. thinking, well, you know, we'll have reached where we want to go when we don't have to do that anymore, right? Yeah. When we don't have to overly sell the fact that we hired yeah. a woman. But on the other side of that, I want to give sensitivity to the men, especially the, maybe the white males coming up in the ranks that, you know, we have to be equitable to them too. So we have to take this whole topic and be sensitive to it. We also don't want to have to start justifying for hiring a certain demographic, right? So I think in general, if the companies have the right policy in place, if they have the right leadership, then the talent needs to respect that the company is making the right decisions mm -hmm. they need to make for the company. So you make the decision that's going to be the right candidate given all we want is equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. It means from that, you're going to hire the best person for the job. I, 
I agree. I cannot agree more. And in electronics, or I would say distribution or hardware, it's a very male dominated in general. I mean, we're very male dominated. And the diversity is, I think that's women electronics coming and building the diversity, building the awareness, um, race, color, skin type, gender. It doesn't matter. We all ha- we all come from similar basis. And it doesn't matter, like as you say, women, though, she has X amount of accolades. But do they talk about the man? I mean, sometimes it's, it's a real topic. The woman has this much accolades. That's why she got this position. But the man, they never talk about all of that. And that is a real talk. I mean, that's real talk. That's the real talk aspect of why. Why do we do that? You know. Well, and I think a lot of male leaders really go out on the limb. So if if a man sponsors a woman, meaning mm-hmm. they offer they they open the doors of opportunity and they really mm-hmm. um, helped her get that position, they're putting their neck on the line. So uh, there has to be a lot of sensitivity to that, but we're not nearly where we need to be with equity. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the dangers is all the hype about it. Mm -hmm. So you hear uh, women have uh, reached um, certain positions and you you hear all these shout outs and you hear these things doesn't necessarily translate in the data, doesn't necessarily translate in the numbers. Mm -hmm. So say, for instance, in our industry, it's looking like we're under 15%. We kept saying 15% in leadership, um, C-suite type Mm -hmm. of positions, um, executive decision-making positions. Uh, We're well below that Mm -hmm. 15%. It looks more like 8%. So even though we're hearing a lot of hype and there's all this publicity, the numbers don't reflect that yet. The talk. Yeah. They don't reflect what is talk. I mean, you talk to talk, but you have to walk it as well. Yes. And there's a lot of, in a lot of different subjects, there's a lot of talk and it's just yes. how do we execute, how to make initiatives and how do we set some milestones? There should be milestones that should be set. And with your help of the women like truck, especially in the electronics industry that you can help get data. And that's why I love you said, I'd like to research a lot of data. Yes. And that data is, could you share with your partners, with people around say, this is the data. And you know, you could do census from, you know, there, they have a 500,000, you can go through that pro- 500 or 2,000 employees. And what's the diversity range? And what happens? And where are the leaders at, you know, and how can we empower those leaders to be move up future women leaders to move up, you know, into those roles, of decision making, because they do have the skill set, just need a little more experience or mentorship, as yes. you say, yes. that can move them up into being in that circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think the main point, too, is for people to really understand um, it's the expansion and in the growth mentality. So it really doesn't have to be because a woman got a position, the man is out, mm-hmm. right? It, it, we are finding in the data that the more equity you have at the table and the more inclusion, the more diversity, the more the company grows and yeah. expands. So we have to start looking at it from that mindset is, is this is a growth mindset. This isn't an either or. And that's the, it also comes to competition. At the end of the day, it's a lot of, I mean, it's the old, old style mentality of uh, the typical man doesn't want comp- someone, a woman coming out of competition, educated or understands. And sometimes that competition s- stalls some of that um, leadership style, you know, and that it's not about competition. It's about making us better together. As right. you said, better together, this whole thing. And then just, oh, because as I always said, I want to, as myself, I don't know everything. I want to hire smarter people that can fill in my weaknesses, yeah. right? It yes. doesn't matter if it's a man, woman, skin color type, that this person has a skill set that can quantify. Mm-hmm. I have, might have a vision that can quantify. And that's how modern day leading should be is we think about that. It shouldn't amount, matter what gender it is. It shouldn't, but they have a particular skill set that I can empower, they can lead, and they can grow um, to be successful anything they're in, that they're, you know, any position they're in. Yeah, and we, we just say, always assume good intent. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to DEI, you always assume there's good intent. Every leader, mm-hmm. even in our industry, even if it's not reflective in their organizations, every everyone has good intent. They don't always know how to go about it. Mm-hmm. And what got us here is definitely not going to get us there. So leaders have been used to a certain way mm-hmm. of leading. So what you're describing is definitely the more modern and it requires a lot of leadership development. So I would say that, you know, here I am working with women electronics all the time and in our specialty is leadership development and all these things, but I'm, I have a long way to go. Right. And so I have to continually develop myself. I have to continually catch myself. I have to continually have those checks and balances. So it doesn't mean that you've arrived somewhere. Even the more you learn, you realize 
wow, I have a lot more to learn. So I think if, if leaders would have that mentality of curiosity and creativity and growth um, and, and looking at what needs to be done moving forward versus what got me here to this point, mm-hmm. right? No, I agree. And that comes to the modern, as you say, modern day leadership of this changing. The world is changing between what type of leader uh, modern we have through the vertical style, through the big business vertical, to more horizontal together leadership. That, And it's also to another thing as a modern day leader is to continuously uh, push, but continuously promote intellectual curiosity, right? Intellectual curiosity, I feel, even in some of the new generation, even because everything, there's, there's, as a team, there's too much information out there. There's a lot of information everywhere. You really, if you are, you know, a lot, a lot of people are, but you can get a college education or education through YouTube yeah. on I mean, any subject just... that you would want to get out there. If you're disciplined enough, you can learn everything. Um, but that's just, you put, you put the time in, you can sacrifice and get it out. And mm-hmm. these days, um, I, I feel sometimes the newer generation also is quick to make a decision because actually there's clickbait. There's a little things, they, shortcuts, a lot of shortcuts mm-hmm. are made. But you have to strive from the, the old, as I say, the old school leadership to the old standard. But a lot of that was thought leadership because of yeah. experience. They come from a oh. lot of experience and wisdom that how they got there, of the course. experiences. That's why a lot of them are authors, book readers. They're mm-hmm. thought leaders, you know, just like someone we share with John Maxwell, mm-hmm. you know, where his story, how his story came about, how he, he was, a, you know, he he wasn't just a businessman. He was in the church, you yes. know, he, he led people that brought him to his entrepreneurial ways yes. to where he is. And that is that really, and today he's modernized it, right. sharing it with people, but there is also the vice versa where a lot of people are, they don't share as much. They have a lot of wisdom and knowledge and sometimes mm. their stories are not told and brought to the forefront. Mm. And uh, that's why the companies um, need to evolve to the modernize. And for me, I think that's really what I've learned is it's not all about I, everything is about with the we, it's not about I, you know, it's about the, the team and nature because without the leader, nothing, if, without the people, I think no, the company can't go anywhere. The leader is just one visionary. You know, the leader, as I said, the Elon Musk of these days or the Steve Jobs, you know, rest in peace, Steve. All those people were leaders in there, but without the team around them oh, yeah. to execute their vision of the how. There is the why and there's the how. To get this, how are we gonna get there? And these people execute. And that's the modern style is of, of the um, Simon Sinek, I'm sure writes about that too, is about how do we modernize that. So what are your thoughts right now, especially electronics? Do you think there's a transition of the leadership kind of change and modernization, a lot of companies you work with, the style that's changing? Well, I would think there's a lot of um, desire to do things different. I don't know what's actually being implemented, but I do think we have in our industry some of the best leaders around. Mm -hmm. Um, I look at people like Phil Gallagher um, and Michael Knight and, you know, people that are on our council. You've got Alan Bird on there and Kimberly Appleton and Lynn Terrell. Some of these leaders, um, uh, Linda Johnson from DigiKey, amazing. She's one of my favorites. Um, They're really dedicated, I think, to leadership and, and what they could be doing different. Now, part of that is catching yourself, is, is the unconscious biases that we've talked mm-hmm. about before, and, and just being aware of yourself. And, and, and really, what never was looked at as a strong leadership trait, such as empathy, is now one of the top traits you need to have yeah, to be a empathy. leader. So it never, it, 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 was a, it was one of those things like you would have been sitting at the table and you would not throw out that word empathy mm-hmm. in leadership and you would not associate that with strength. And now in the modern style of leadership, it's really your strength is in your listening, in your compassion, in your understanding and your execution. Yeah, and uh, you're right, everything. The last couple of years, a lot of that's out there. I mean, I know one person that's big in the in the social media world is Gary Vaynerchuk. He's Gary V. He's always, that's he promotes lead with empathy. Mm-hmm. Everything's about empathy. You have to relate and be empathized with the person. It's not about, and we always don't think about that. We always, the first thing, the first motive is about ourselves, about selling or doing whatever we're going to do is about listen. Listen and then listen and understand and empathize with what the situation could be, any situation. And even as a leader today, um, that's why I want to get to is the empathy side, is that these leaders that you're, you, um, you just mentioned, how are they also relating to the new generation coming in? 
You know, that's a, how is the style changing? Because now it's not about just the brand of the company. People want to work with companies that have leaders, powerful leaders that, 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 um, that they inspire to work with. How can I work with this person? Right. You know, if they're not in the front, yes, they're maybe successful CEO, they built these companies or they're just on, but they're not present. So in our, in our industry, I mean, I know it's a lot of those top leaders aren't forefront. You know, and I think the last couple of years, they're coming more and more. Yes. And it's because it's they want, you have to green talent. And the new generation, they want someone up there that is, empathizes, understands, and relates to the, to the style. Yeah, and likability. Um, yeah. So if I think of our council members, which are some of the top leaders in the industry, um, I would say f from just my experience with mm -hmm. them is that they're listening. Okay that they yeah. are actually paying attention. They might not always agree with everything, mm -hmm. but they're listening and they're actually taking steps to do what makes sense in their situation. Yeah. So I would say, um, if I look at all of our council members, um, each one of them has a sense of empathy, has a sense of um, compassion and desire to um, lead differently moving mm -hmm. forward, not being a pushover mm -hmm. and not doing things that don't make sense, but yet taking a new look at the way they're doing things. So that is the one thing I could tell you about that I'm very impressed with our council members for is um, I, I just think they're all curious. Yes. I think they're all creative. Um, and I think that they worked hard, every th single one of them. So that would be the thing I think you were asking me about, you know, our youth um, before is we all had to work hard. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, I, I was interviewing Adam Norwood, who's one of my favorites, um, just got to know him over COVID and you just threw some conversations with women electronics, but he said something in an interview one time and he said, you know, they call work, work for a reason. It's work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not called play. It's called work. And I just started laughing when he said that because I would love for the, the upcoming generation to understand, yes, there's that healthy balance with you want to have a well-rounded life. You don't want to be working so hard that you sacrifice your home life, right? Too much. But you do have to work really hard. Nobody got here. If you look at, say, Phil Gallagher, he didn't just get put in that position. He worked his butt off to be where he is, right? If you look at Michael Knight and you look at Kimberly Appleton and Lynn Terrell and all these leaders, Lenon Clark on our council, oh my goodness, Taya Page, it, they worked hard. Linda Johnson, she'll be in there on the weekends packing products at DigiKey. Like you're never above, you know, anybody when you're in that leadership position. And that's, you, you bring up a good point because even that leaders, you have to be able to, because it depends. You hear the all C level, a lot of people say, they're disconnected. I mean, even public company, big public company, in any industry, are they connected to the people? Are they connected to, um, do they get their hands dirty? And yeah, of course, they've earned the position. They don't have to get their hands dirty, but it's always being, uh, can they bring themselves down and go into um, go into the sales department, the basic, or, or the warehouse? Find out how the process is, work, work on process improvement. And, and that thing is, is that the visibility mm -hmm. builds likeness at scale, you're right? So the more visible they are to the people and yeah. how they share, and that's one, one thing I experienced, what I learned, as, I mean, it was, it's funny, you might travel to Asia a lot, was when I traveled, I visited um, to a lot of the, the factories. I met with a lot of buyers, and I was like a executive manager, and I would meet with the buyers or go to the factory, and I'm like, they were just appreciative that I spoke to them just like I would speak to an executive. Mm -hmm. I did not treat them any different. And they were just happy that every time I come there, I'm like, okay, I want to meet this person, meet this person, say hi. You know, all the people, doesn't matter what level they're at, I treated everybody equally. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, yes, there could be higher level talks of certain negotiations, but I treated everybody, I have empathy for everybody, I treated them, I didn't think I was better than anybody. And that's one thing I, I learned from the respect that you get from anywhere you go, is like, this person didn't think they're better than me. They just, they earned a lot, they worked hard, but we're, we're all humans. Yes, well, and I think that's one thing COVID taught us yeah. too, is in, in those people that you took for granted were essential, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, think of me getting my hair done and nails done and things like that. I mean, that's essential to a lot of us, yeah. but things you took for granted, the person checking out, you know, mm -hmm. the clerk at the grocery store. Right. I, every time I go to the grocery store, even now I go, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy if I'm able to be blessed enough to sit yep. down and have a meal out, which is so nice to yep. be able to do that again. I always thank the servers. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So 
what we take for granted sometimes we don't realize how is essential to us. And I also think that the other big differentiator going into the future, Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of companies, um, we had a leadership um, coach, mentor, advisor, entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. Jeff Henderson on our women electronics uh, training, professional training. And he, I loved his training because he was all about what are you for, not what are you against. Mm -hmm. So I loved his training because he was actually asking companies. So he's an advisor to Chick-fil-A and Home Depot and a lot Mm -hmm. of these companies. And what he does is he goes in there and he gets down to the core root of the company first. What What are you for? What are your values? Number one, what what are you operating in? What's your mindset? And so his whole program and, and way he advises people is what are you going to do and what are you for versus what are you against? So I think too much in our world right now, we've had a lot of that. And especially through COVID and we had this weird politics and all kinds of things going on. So many people worry about what they're against, but it's better and more effective to focus on what you are for. And the things that you can control, the things you cannot control. And that's one thing is most of the things that we're against, we cannot really control. But the things we can control what we're for. We can control what we're for. We can control what the time we put into and make changes to better ourselves, better the people around us, influence, in positive influence mm-hmm. around people mm-hmm. as, it, as being a, a parent or being a leader, being a friend. Um, and that really, with COVID, I think that that pandemic has pushed the way humans um, feel and empathize more than ever. Oh. And, and you, you brought that to the forefront, just like our frontline, are you saying they're frontline workers, they're service people. That we work with every day we took for granted yes. and the people that work in our warehouses at our companies the mm-hmm. people that were those yes. are essential essential you cannot function in any business without having those essential yeah. workers mm-hmm. the office people the top management the, the if those those first those uh the service workers or those as you say the, the essential people that are in the warehouse if they're gone there's Parts. nothing shipping. There's no invoicing. Yes. There's no there's no revenue incoming. There's not, yes. So it doesn't matter. You, and these are, I think, it puts things in perspective that some people don't really look into. And you're, you, that's why you hit the nail on the head is it, it, it has changed our lives. Mm-hmm. It's not technologically, but also influence, management styles, the way we work, the way we talk. And now coming out of this is how do we become better and say not to have the rubber band effect. Right. Keep improving. Right. And, and I think it always comes back to your values. Yeah. What are you valuing in your company and how are you operating? Because that's going to come out in what you're for. Mm-hmm. It's going to come out in your policies. It's going to come out in your procedures. It's going to be come out in the way you promote people. So I think that original deep dive and look into your own company and, and all the companies in the industry mm-hmm. to, to really assess where they're at with how they're operating and how is it different now than it was before? Are we re-looking at all of that now? So, you know, I know with women electronics, if we look at, um, th- there's so many women's groups out there, like mm-hmm. there's a dime a dozen. And by mm-hmm. the way, we didn't start at a time when it was popular. <laughs> we started uh, before the uh, Me Too movement, which we would then the Me Too movement came after and we were like, oh no, because we that's not what we were about. Yeah. So there's so many different styles and types, but we decided we're going to focus on what we're for and not what we're against. So we decided we want to unite with Mm -hmm. our male counterparts. We want to operate from a value-based organization, Mm -hmm. and we want to make a difference. And so it's been really endearing and just to have these industry companies come alongside of alongside of us and to have the advisory board we have and the council we have and the founding board members and i will give a little shout out to karen prince who passed away recently one um of our founding board members that was oh. just really tragic for us and and really heartbreaking um so i'll just give a little shout out to her too but it all comes back to legacy mm-hmm. so when karen passed it made me realize like this was part of her legacy you mm-hmm. know we could do so many things in our lives but when it all is said and done, what did you do to make an impact on people? It, you know, when when your life is over, people will forget the profits, but they won't forget the people you impacted. It's very powerful. And that's one of the values of why I started The Real Talk is to tell the story of legacy and to learn and to meet people like yourself 
to understand and everybody has a story and as the younger generation comes into industry and newer people is to build that influence of like there's a story and how powerful they are because these are leaders or decision makers that change pathways in certain things that we do because who knows 20 30 years from when electronics would be a different path but yeah. it was started and that legacy is there and those stories aren't told enough Right. And those people aren't appreciated enough, especially in our electronics industry, as you know. A lot of people, a lot of appreciation should be a lot of these founding members. Mm -hmm. The last 50, 60 years of this, you know, all these companies that, are not, uh, especially the um, the passing of um, TTI, uh, Paul, from Andrews. Paul Andrews, yeah. um, when he passed away, it, that's a big legacy he left behind. Legacy. He wasn't very up in the forefront. He wasn't always in the public eye in the industry, but that's a founding. A lot of people knew and didn't know who he was. Yes. And TTI was one of the groundbreaking leaders of distribution in the industry. So these are the stories that I think in the next, as you know, for the next five to 10 years, we're gonna have a lot of succession. A lot of succession is gonna happen. And yes. are, is that awareness being built of the, those leaders that will, will be, and the new ones coming in to understand? Well, and the, I have to say too, that I'm, I just don't believe all of our leaders can be replaced. If yeah. I look at certain leaders, like, you know, you mentioned Paul Andrews, I just mentioned our council yeah. members, and you've got people like Bruce Keller. There's, I mean, countless leaders, mm -hmm. men and women in our industry that have been here for so many years that started in the industry that, you know, factory workers and all different stuff, and then working their way up and yeah. becoming leaders. Everybody's got their own story. But I think to replace that experience, mm -hmm of seeing the industry change over the years. And you mentioned wisdom. So it takes a lot of years of hard work, of mistakes, of mentorship to gain wisdom. So we have, uh, we're very fortunate, I think, at this stage of where we're at in our industry that we have the leaders we have in place who have that longevity, mm -hmm. have the wisdom, have the ability to kind of see from a very high level and because sometimes the new talent come in, it has such a fresh and excited view of things, but it's not always realistic to mm -hmm. implement some of the ideas. So it is important right now. So we have the Women Electronics Mentorship Program, okay. and we're really trying to connect our mature leaders with fresh talent coming up and even just um, middle management, like people who have been in a position for, say, a long time, and they want to do something different. So we're really trying to connect because... How do you replace that talent? You actually don't. Mm -hmm. You don't. And so we're encouraging our top leaders, please, please, please mentor. Because we find they get so busy, they're really not actually mentoring. So we'd like them to actually help and mentor our next generation coming up. Yeah, I and mean, that's so powerful about that. Um, I, I agree. It's the mentorship of bringing that awareness. And I think there should be not just because you're just a small in the pie of the, the tens of th hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of people in the industry is how can we build more awareness of that? Because also is taking that wisdom, that story, because that wisdom could influence the younger generation to make different decisions, yes. can make empower them. But if that stories aren't heard, or at least that, that new person comes to this big public company, it's a big distribution company, but doesn't know really what the founding story is. And hearing the story of the trials and tribulations they went to, yeah. you know, these are the, the things that do also make that younger generation make better decision making. Yes. Make yes. more critical thinking of like, I heard this person, you know, you know, um, you know, Paul Andrews, I hope Paul said this once, you know, he said this is the way, you know, yeah. then you critical thinking if I make the decision, oh, this didn't work or we tried this. So you can learn, I say it's always learn from experience. Of course, when we're younger, we just always think we know it all, you know, and we realize that, it's not. There is a lot of wisdom out there. Technology can change. By the end of the day, it's the the business is business, and the the platform how we operate business is changing. But the business itself, how it operates, is almost is the same. It's mm -hmm. just we are very technologically, and everything's moving much faster very fast. than ever because decisions were made. Yes. It weren't quantified so fast. Yes, you know. Yes, it's true, and I think you just don't know who's watching, though. I think yeah. that would be my big um, takeaway too is I remember when I was coming up in the ranks and I had certain leaders that I really looked up to and I still refer back or when I'm making certain decisions I think what would so-and-so say yeah. or do in this situation so as a leader in the industry people don't realize other people are watching it's almost like when you have kids at home and they're watching you all the time they're like watching you cook they're watching you clean they're watching how you interact they're watching what you do when you're irritated they're watching what you do when you're happy 
They're watching how you treat your spouse. They're watching everything. So the leaders have to understand their talent's watching. Yeah. They're watching everything yeah. and they're seeking inspiration. They're seeking mentorship. They're seeking what they should be doing in certain situations. Mm-hmm. And um, again, one of our leaders I, I interviewed on the podcast he made such a good point about indirect mentorship when you're in an office. So this is the case for sometimes being mm-hmm. young professional in an office. He would watch his superior, the way he handled himself in tough situations, the way he responded, and he picked it up and yep. learned from it. So I think that as leaders, we have to know that, that the organization is really watching. I 100% agree. Um, it, it, it's right. <laughs> the now, you, you made a little like metaphor analogy there that it is right. It's like children, like they sponges, they grab it and everything around you, you build that awareness and you, you, you soak it in. You yeah. soak it in because you're exposed to it. Mm-hmm. You're exposed to it over and over of how people react, decisions that are made, what's said. If someone next to you makes a mistake, how if there were this incident happened or what happened or how it was, um, how a solution was formed and the thought process behind it. And that's why from uh, actually thinking about with my uh, with uh, our team at IBS too, it's like when the situation happens, we wanna have a, a resolution, but we want everybody involved. Okay, how did we get here? Mm-hmm. Before it was like, oh, you know, reprimand, oh, did this, this is wrong, yeah. no. How do we get here? How do we make sure it doesn't happen again? Right. You know, of course you can have instant reports, this, but there's a lot of people involved. There's a lot of chain and you always cannot, as I said, it's your, Sometimes you say you're you're uh, you're guilty until proven innocent. And sometimes it happens, right? <laughs> it does, but it's yes. not. You know that could yes. happen because yes. you never know. The, there's two sides to every story. Yep. Doesn't matter through business, through friendships, through uh, uh, hearsay. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of that. You have to, as a leader, as a modern day leader, you have to step back and say, okay, let's let's talk this out. And that yes. is powerful for the new generation. That's critical because I think the thing that the leaders have to understand, and, and probably a lot of people just haven't thought about until now but it will go back to the parent analogy when you react in a certain way say it's a you don't you're not always on your best game say you make a mistake which okay everybody has a past to make a mistake sometimes right um your talent is either going to disrespect that or absorb it so they're either going to say eat that wasn't right and i don't really respect that or I'm just going to start doing the same thing. So to correct it, just like when you're a parent, you just apologize. Yeah. Yep. You just come to the table when you're wrong and say, I'm so sorry I handled that this way. I'm going to regroup. I'm going to, you know, you correct it and you gain so much more momentum, respect, the, the, the team. So I don't think that the pressure is on the leaders to be perfect and never make a mistake. And I think uh, Brene Brown said it perfectly she said that, you know, the people that are the most precious to her are not the people that never did anything wrong or didn't hurt her. It's the people who came and said sorry. Yeah. The people who came and corrected It's humility. It. It's, it's having humility. the humility that, you, that yes. you make mistakes mm-hmm. and we're nothing perfect. Yes. And that humility is very powerful. It doesn't matter if you're a leader or friend or whatever it is. You know, I did make a mistake. I did judge. I did get a little defensive and I overreacted and I had the humility to say yes. And I take responsibility for it and let's work to improve ourselves. That case, if it it is from a child, from a child seeing that from a parent or from the workplace or a leader having humility saying, you know what? We made the wrong decision. That was right. And taking that humility, like let's learn from this. Let's grow from this. And you go back to even relationships and marriages. Oh yeah. Think about it. How many times are we so stuck on being right um, and not having the humility just to go and say sorry. And once you do do that and you break that ice, uh, everything is just, it just dissipates and everything's so much better. So that is the same with leadership. Mm-hmm. It's the same with a modern day leader needing, needing to have those exact same skills to say, you know what, it doesn't always matter if I was right. It doesn't always matter. What matters is that, did I hurt somebody's feelings? Did I overstep my bounds? Um, let's come back to the table and just make sure the unity is in place. Yeah, I cannot agree more. And that's what I will say with your the mission of Women Electronics and what they bring to the table is like empowering not just women, but men to all lead with empathy, have more humility, go through the process, how to be better leaders and better people in general, mm-hmm. how to be in this last year and a half is is rehuman, rehumanize each other. Yes. Yes. 
you know, rehumanizing each other, coming together. And of course, thankfully, we had we have technology that we could see each other, at least digitally through platforms mm -hmm. and have the nonverbal see, but you can't replace that in person, of course. But, uh, but it's still there because, um, of course, text message, black and white text yeah. can come across and every person differently. And that's yeah. why sometimes just get on the phone. Why go and cry? I mean, I've seen, I, hey, I'm guilty as charged. I've done it too. Sometimes, why am I so, just pick up the phone. Yes. They, I sent a message, they took it wrong. They thought I was upset or rude or, yep. but it was sarcasm, you know, and these things. And sometimes could, we're yeah. just moving fast, right? And, Correct. And, and that's the thing about women. We tend to get more emotional. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually have a training coming up on uh -huh. that uh, this Thursday um, about managing your emotions. Mm -hmm. But that is another area. It's really important to understand the differences of men and women. Mm -hmm in the boardroom and, and it's not that um women uh, you know have to be overly sensitive but we we tend that's an area <laughs> that we have to have a lot of self-reflection on so that we um can control that and it comes from a place of passion it comes from a place of wanting uh to do good and to do good for the company yeah. so if the men could understand that when you see a woman that has maybe cried in the boardroom that's a good thing because she cares she is committed and she cares. So don't put her down for crying in the boardroom. It's like a man having a tizzy fit and, yeah. and throwing something, which I've seen a million times. Um, but it's the same thing. Men might express yeah. it in anger and women in emotions, but as yeah. long as you have the passion and you can contain yeah. that, it's a good thing. I agree. I agree. So with Women Electronics, I mean, this, all these 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 resources, what to, what are all the resources Women Electronics uh, provides to men, to women and men from your website, the seminars? What are right now are you offering um, out there? For, what, are all the, what are all the resources that you oh offer? Oh, my goodness. Okay. So first of all, like I said, we have a public duty to provide information to the community at large. Okay. So every Tuesday, we do put out the We Weekly, okay. and we do a lot of research on data and content. Everything's revolved around mm -hmm. equity, inclusion, DEI. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Look for that We Weekly. You can just subscribe to our mailing list. Yep. You get a lot of information on what's happening in the industry, DEI, just all kinds of stuff about the organization, trainings, events, you name it. We, we put that every week. And we, we have a lot of resources. So we have data. Mm -hmm. If anybody's interested in data and learning more about DEI, come to us. We'll load you up with data. Um, we have a book club that okay. brings people together mm -hmm. to talk about, um, you know, professional development mm -hmm. typically, although this time our book's a little bit different. Um, it's not a leadership book. Um, it, it's a different type of book, but in the tech industry. So um, we, we have a lot. We have our chapter meetings where people come together for thought leadership. Mm -hmm all kinds of leaders. It's a global um, chapter program. We have our mentorship program and we have our training and development, which is a pretty critical part of what we're doing. Um, so we have professional and we have life balance. Mm -hmm. And we really believe, um, this is the other thing, the modern way of leadership, you have to have some sense of life balance because if you're exhausted and you're overworked and your marriage is suffering and your kids aren't doing great, you are not gonna perform well mm -hmm. at work not to your optimal level. So we really promote the life balance. Yeah. Um, and so we have a lot of webinars on that health. We're aligned with a research center in uh, Colorado where they have expert researchers on women's mm -hmm. health in particular. So we do a lot of uh, trainings about our health, uh, well-being, and then how that relates to translating that to show up as your best self in your work life. As a new, as a prospective um, member or of someone that's looking, what is, as a, for the membership, what is free get me access and what has to be for membership side? Someone that wants to be more part, just to look at and observe, and then what comes in with the, with the membership? What's the difference? So all of our resources as far as our data and things like that, that's all free resources. Okay, but if you want to attend trainings, okay. you have to be a member. Okay. Uh, chapter meetings, you could pay a little fee and hop on those chapter meetings if you're not a member, um, but that's a member benefit. Um, and same with, say, the book club. What we like to do is we've kept our membership cost really low. Mm -hmm. um, we don't um, charge what we need to, mm -hmm. and that's why we go out to get sponsorships yes. in the industry. Mm -hmm. So we have a huge sponsorship family, and so they're promoting and supporting women in electronics, but they're also doing a service for the industry mm -hmm. because as they're supporting us, we're able to support the industry with all these initiatives. So 
just shout out to all of our sponsors. And if anybody listening has an interest in being involved in a Mm -hmm. diversity and inclusion um, type of initiative in a mindset, would love to partner with you at Women Electronics. So that's it. You hear it from Jackie Maddox, the the (laughs) founder and the president of uh, Women Electronics. She is the woman in electronics industry. So I just wanted to reach out for all the the users, people listening out there. And, uh, but thank you again. Thank you for coming. This has been great. Great catching up to you with you. But also actually one other thing I want to come up of uh, say is I uh, forgot to ask is what have you been here? I mean, I know you talked to all the leaders. You've been talking about the leaders and board members. How's the business you've been seeing? How's the business overall? Is everybody good. pause? Everybody's good. How's the overall business for yeah. all the companies? We had talked about, yeah. of course, there's all the issues with supply chain. Of yeah. course, everybody's facing that. Um, but business overall seems to be rocking. Okay. I mean, yeah. business overall seems to be really good. Um, in general, I think the issue is that talent seems to be maxed out okay. it seems to be that people are extremely overworked mm-hmm. um but business seems to be up yeah the talent recruitment and bringing people in um is is challenging it's challenging um but yeah the business is up and as i say it is up for everybody but now it's like is it is there going to be a down because the economy in general is up. everybody is down that's why i think everybody's like it's christmas it's christmas for everybody well, and it's hard it, you know it's our industry i've started when I was just still in college mm-hmm. and I'll tell you I started as a rep and you just it's see the, the industry always going through the cycle so it's that never ending hey when times are good save for it right yeah. because there's going to be those downturns we we just hit COVID right yeah. so it's amazing to me that the industry didn't suffer during COVID the mm-hmm. industry actually rose now, while we were in it, especially at those beginning stages when everything was shut down. It was and, unknown. Yeah, it was unknown. I mean, yeah. if you look at the leadership in place, okay, I look at people like, say, Don Acri, uh, you know, him stepping in and Mike Morton and, you know, Michael Knight, Phil Gallagher, all these people and all these different organizations that rose to the occasion. And, and that's the one thing about leadership. When tragedy hits, or crisis hits, you don't have time to develop yourself. It's game on, and either you're there or you're not. And these leaders that were in place, and I look at all of our sponsor companies, they rose. I look at Phil Gallagher, that guy rose to the occasion. There's so many, Lynn Terrell, oh my goodness, you could not get more of an expert on supply chain. She rose to the occasion. Um, Linda Johnson at DigiKey was talking to her. I mean, she was just right there kimberly appleton all all these leaders i'm so impressed because it shows that what you're doing on a daily basis you know you're doing the right thing when you hit crisis and you lead through it well nothing's a better test than that and unfortunately none of us want to go through that test but if you look at some of these companies and how they came out the other side that's just good leadership I agree because a lot of those leaders I had networked with, I talked to, or I had them on a podcast, and they were really, it's it's powerful last year with everybody. And everybody rose, everybody got digital, everybody put their face out there. And I could say to TTI too, having those road shows they had, mm-hmm. digital road shows they had, they had hundreds of them yeah. with different customers. And it, it, there is some type of lead by example. Yeah. A lot of people led by example, of course, not so, I mean, it just differ, it differentiates everybody. Now, a lot, those, a lot of those companies who led by example are, are ben- seeing the benefits now. As business goes, they're going to get more exposure, more visibility, more opportunity because they led and they were exposed. And they're yeah. the wise leaders. Like yeah. you've mentioned that before. So we need a lot of the young talent to come up and give us a fresh perspective. Mm-hmm. But nothing could replace when that hit COVID. Thank God we had the leaders in place we did yeah. because they had the endurance of being in the industry for so many years. They had the wisdom and they had the ability to make some really good decisions. So we just lucked out that we weren't already in our leadership turnover, right? Because yeah. in the next five or 10 years, we're going to have a lot of leaders kind of starting to retire. So um, a good thing that we had our leaders in place still. Sound. We're sound. We're sound. We're sound. And uh, hopefully we've evolved and we'll be even stronger uh, with all that information technology. And we can, any natural disaster, pandemic, not, you know, anything happens, we can be prepared for it. Yeah. And one last thing that I want to mention to you too, because we hadn't talked about it, but yeah. we are actually leading a massive recruitment effort in the industry so we're aligned right now with one college in particular who is bringing in a lot of diverse uh, students to their school 
And we're partnering with them on an industry level. And so we're in this partnership and we're super excited because we're going to be bringing in interns. We're going to be bringing in new talent. And through Women in Electronics, we're going to handhold them for the first couple of years in the industry so that we retain... Is that men and women? Men and women. Men and women. I'll start, yeah, men and women holding hands together side by side. Is it uh, more industry tech related or is it any, is any open? Position any position in okay. the industry. So okay. we've created like a buddy system with okay. women electronics, like a group mentorship mm -hmm. type of uh, program. So these youth coming in, we looked at the data and yeah. we did all the research and we found that we usually have them for about two years and they leave. So we decided let's give them that buddy system for a couple years so they can talk through some issues with us rather than leaving their company, yes. rather than going somewhere else. And so we've, we, we've been able to talk several of our youth off the ledge and they've been super happy on the other side. So some of it is just the communication and giving them that ability to not have to ask their boss questions that they don't want to ask them all the time and maybe they don't understand the channel and maybe they're not asking for certain things that are important to them and we give them a way um, to be able to communicate that and they, they typically stay. Yeah, I think it's the, the mentorship that helps as you guys are mentoring them and uh, because we don't know it all. As a, as a new generation coming out of college or going to a position, like, who do you ask? Sometimes a lot of them, some people are more a little introverted. They don't ask a lot of questions and having mm -hmm. that that place that woman electronic or some, you know, a mentorship to say, hey, I just don't know. I felt very insecure. I don't know how to answer that question. And say, like, hey, these are the ways to go about it. And this is, you know, there is not, as I said, when you're young, it's not a stupid question. Ask the questions, right. you know. Um, and these are things I always to even tell my team. There's no stupid questions. Just don't make sure you do it 10 times in a row, make the same mistake. But yes. we're here to help. Yes. So if you ask and we can guide you through that, to yes. hold your hand, as you say, mm -hmm. hold your hand through it. Because, um, I mean, as I said, there is hard work, discipline, and sacrifice. And nothing is always butterfly and sunshine. That's how I feel. Sometimes it's like I everybody know, thinks they got out of college. It's butterflies and sunshine going to the workplace. No, yeah. it's not. And so basically, we're, we're really excited about yeah. that. We're excited to help retain some youth in the industry Good. i think the program and the structure we have in place should be set up for that we hope we have success excellent excellent well thank you very much jackie for coming in again just the full of wisdom information and also leading industry itself um there should be more you know women electronics and other industries like what you're doing and i think it's 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 something that's uh close to my heart too and i and i love to bring out do whatever i can to help you out Thank you. Always appreciate your support, <laughs> for sure. Always appreciate. Thank, Thank you, you, Jackie. Thank you so much. Take okay. care. Bye-bye.